Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Hyperconverged architectures. We're talking a lot about them in the uh, marketplace today. Data centers are very interested in them. They tend to simplify things. They should add flexibility. But one of the points we don't talk about enough is how they network into the existing infrastructure. So joining me on the whiteboard to help me with that conversation, I've invited back Kevin Erringer. Kevin is the CEO of Data Center Systems. Kevin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, George. So Kevin, last time we had you out, you kind of helped us with a uh, true structured uh, cabling environment for the SAN uh, data center environment. I thought that was very helpful for our viewers. Uh, but now I want to change the conversation a little bit and talk about hyperconverged, right? And so what we're doing at hyperconverged is, in theory, we're collapsing storage and compute into the same uh, box. And we kind of say we're, at least on the brochures, we say we're also collapsing networking, which I, I don't think we are. So in the hyperconverged ar architecture, what we've done is we've got storage in these boxes. Most of the time nowadays, it's flash. And then that storage is aggregated into a virtual volume that is then shared between all those. Well, obviously, we've got our normal high performance server networking concerns we got to be careful with. And now I've got data, bits of data being spread across multiple disks within these things. To me, that seems like we got to really nail the, the networking piece. What do you think? I agree with you, George, 100%. And I think the approach to take here is with the hyperconverged going to 10 gig and running over fiber, it seems we need to maybe want to take a step back and look at how the mainframe environment has dealt with the structure cabling going back all the way to the first fiber attached mainframe. So what old is new again? What's old is new again. And yeah. I think from the from the structure cabling also to, to how equipment is laid out. Okay. So talk us through uh, how we would wire this up. So the hyperconverged, when you have your nodes with your compute as well as your storage, they're going to be 10 gig fiber connections. And those connections need to talk to ultimately to the core switch. Okay also has to talk in the interim step to the top of rack switch. So in this environment, we'll draw our switches down here, our core, and then the top of rack switches are traditionally in the current environment, they're putting them either in the top of the rack or maybe above three or four cabinets so they can try to minimize how many ports they are not using in one rack. Right. But ultimately, the top of rack switches have to talk to the core with the 40 gig uplinks. Okay. And then the 10 gig connections on the top of rack switch have to talk to our nodes. All right, so I'm running 10 gig from here to my top of rack and then 40 gig from my top of rack to the core. Everything I'm seeing, this is all optical now. We're not doing copper anymore, right? Exactly, yeah. which I then, I believe then leads us right back to where we started, to where IBM started with the first true structure cabling for the mainframe environment in the data center. So if you look at putting what IBM called zone patching locations out distributed on the floor. Okay. And then these are just passive patch panels. And then your 10 gig links would run from your nodes to your patch panel. This would already be trunked up to a central patching location. So once again, you're trunked up here. So your core switches have 40 gig fiber ports connecting it back to the central. Okay. You have 10 gig links coming from your top of rack switch to support your nodes. You also have 40 gig ports coming back to talk to your core. Okay. So in this environment, it's perfect for this connectivity and the, the true structure connectivity with FTS methodology. So now you just patch your 10 gig ports to your 10 gig ports, which are then ultimately connected back at the zone. And then you patch your 40 gig ports to your 40 gig ports that are coming in from the core switch. The beauty of this is, once again, as one of the most important things is you're not getting in to that switch every time you add new nodes. Okay, and then Kevin, I'm gonna throw you a curveball because one of the things we always talk about in hyperconverged is you can you know, uh, pay as you grow, right? Just as you need more compute, more storage, you just add another node. So uh, tell me how, easy it would be or hard if I did 
you know, uh, six months from now, add another node with more storage. How does that cable in? Well, that's the great part. You already okay. have you already have trunk cable running from your central patching location out to the zone patching location or zone access point. All you do run jumpers uh, six to eight to ten, depending on how many that equipment manufacturer needs. Okay, it runs back to the zone automatically with the trunks coming here. Now that port is represented by a port on the front of the patch panel then you just patch it over to your top of rack switch because that would be a 10 gig connection. Okay, great. So, and I think this is really, really important because in hyperconverged, all we're talking about is flexibility, flexibility, pay as you grow. And if you don't have the infrastructure nailed, that all that flexibility, if you got to wait 12 days to get a, a, a new node connected, you sort of lost all that flexibility, haven't you? I agree 100%. The, the, the faster, the more equipment you put in, the more need for availability you're going to need to turn that up. So the last thing you want to do is continue to run direct connections right. from your switches or from a central out. You want to have it available out at the zones, that way you're turning it up immediately. Awesome. Well, Kevin, I knew if there's anybody that could help me out, it was going to be you. So thanks for joining well, us Thank today. you very much. So there you have it. If you're looking at a hyper-converged architecture, we talk about how it collapses storage, networking, and compute. And it certainly does storage and compute, but networking remains critical, as you can see right here. And if you don't have a really good, solid plan, adding nodes and taking advantage of all the flexibility that we talk about in hyper-converged goes right out the window. So make sure that you nail the, the infrastructure before you do anything else. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.